the dark side of record label contracts and knowing what the actual worst deals look like is what we're gonna cover in this video. So I've done, you know, videos on the channel talking all about record label agreements, how they work, how to protect yourself. You can watch those, but in this video, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna be talking about essentially the reverse of how you need to think about this. And um, I've heard other people do this kind of thing, like Alex Hermosi, definitely gotta give him credit, but basically these are all of the things that you should do if you wanna have the absolute worst deal. And I think by saying it this way, it's going to resonate and it will help you when you actually do get to the point that you are negotiating your record label contract. So let's just jump right into this. So if you want to have the worst record label deal, what you're going to do is you're going to give up creative control. In your contract, it typically is going to have two things that it says. One is going to be who has creative control and one is who has the business control. Almost always, it's going to be the record label, right? So they'll say, we make all business decisions, you have no say, and that's just how it's going to be. And you usually can't negotiate that. But when it comes to the creative control, you want to make sure that you are always negotiating so that you actually do retain that creative control of what happens to your music right? Things like, where do you record your music? What studios do you work in? What producers do you work with? What songwriters are on your tracks? If you don't have that creative control, then you're not going to be able to control ultimately your sound. And I've had so many artists who sign with big labels and they're so excited and they don't want to pay attention to this and it ends up resulting in a really, really bad deal. Okay. So that's number one. If you want the crappiest record label deal, make sure you give up that creative control. Number two, I don't want you to negotiate your royalty rate. Okay. If you want to have the worst deal in the world, when you get the contract from the record label, whatever royalty rate they're saying you're going to get for your music, just accept it because you know what? You have nego you know, no negotiation power. They're not going to listen to you. A typical mid-size to large record label is going to offer you something like, let's say, 12 to 14% of your royalties. So that means of all the royalties related to your music, all of your music earnings, you will only get, let's say, 12%. So what you definitely don't want to do is to negotiate that higher and to basically say, I think that's way too low. I think I should get, let's say 18%. I think I should get 20%. Now, if you are working with an independent record label, a smaller label, it's a lot more common that it's 50-50. And I say you go in, guns a blazing, and you say, I want 60%, I want 70%, like start really high. So that way, if you do end up at like 50-50, then cool. So if you definitely wanna have the worst deal possible, do not negotiate your royalties and just take whatever the label says is good. All right, number three on how we craft the worst record label contract for you. You're going to make sure you agree to having a ton of options in your contract. So an option is held by the record label to extend the contract. So they and the way they sell this to you and they're going to make it sound real great. They're going to be like, hey, we want to have like four or five options to extend for more albums so we can keep investing in you. Sounds great. Wow. Someone believes in your dream. They're excited about you. So you're going to be like, cool, of course. The reason why that's not so good is because if you hate the label, they're doing a terrible job. Maybe they're not doing anything, but they are going to keep you locked into that contract and there's nothing you can do about it because you have to meet all of your recording requirements, right? So if they're like, you owe us two albums, you got to get those albums. And then they exercise their options and they keep extending it. So make sure if you want the crappiest record label deal possible, agree to as many options as the record label wants, because that's going to keep you in the contract for probably the next seven to 10 years. Number four, let's make sure that you keep and take a really big advance from the label. Okay. Why wouldn't you? If the label's like, hey, I want to give you $100,000. That's amazing, right? Who doesn't want $100,000? The way it works, though, is that the advance is a loan. If it's a loan, that means you have to pay it back. Now, the way it's paid back is they take the money from your side of earnings until the label recoups. So that just means you're not going to see dime one for a long time. So if you're like, hey, I'm banking on the 100K, 
I'm going to be able to use it to pay my rent and, you know, get all the things that I need, food, electricity. Cool. But you got to be strategic with this. Okay. So if you're not paying attention and you want to make sure that you just have a huge debt as you are now tied with this record label, take a really large advance upfront. Number five, let's also make sure that we never look at the accounting. So the record label, number one, agrees in the contract of when they're going to tell you about the accounting. They're going to tell you how much stuff is making and they're going to pay you. So we're going to make sure that we're not paying attention to when those deadlines are because you know what? The label probably is not going to send them on time and we don't want to ruffle feathers. So we're not really going to pay attention to it. And then even when we do get a statement, we're not going to follow up and be like, hmm, this looks kind of weird. I just saw that I got a million plays and you're paying me two dollars. Strange or just to get clarification. So if we want to make sure that we have really the worst possible deal, let's not pay attention to the accounting or ask questions or make sure that the record label is providing the statements due under the contract. And then number six, I would just say, let's make sure always and forever, let's give up ownership of our masters to the record label. Now, unfortunately, for a lot of you watching this, the standard record label deal provides that you do have to give up ownership of the masters. That's the deal. They're investing in you. And some, you know, sometimes that's money. <laughs> sometimes it's not. It's power and connection and all these things that the record label promises to you. And in exchange for that, you give up ownership of your music, regardless of what happens during the relationship, regardless of whether they actually do anything for you. And that's the case. Now, can you do anything about this? The answer is yes. When we're able to really negotiate to make sure that people retain ownership of their masters, it's because guess what? You have negotiation power. Don't be so eager to jump into these contracts when you're like, I have no following and I have nothing going on. And like, this is the time I should sign with a label. No, because then you have no negotiation power. My clients who are independent artists who end up coming in and doing deals with Universal and Warner and they keep their ownership. The reason they're able to do that is because we end up doing licensing agreements. So they keep ownership, the label just gets to distribute the music and get a cut from earnings over a period of time. And the only reason they're able to do that is because they have numbers and followers and stuff going on. So we have negotiation power. So if you want to make sure you have just a terrible, terrible agreement, I would say not only give up ownership of your masters, but make sure that you sign with a label when you have absolutely no negotiation power. That was two in one. There you go. <laughs> Number seven, when it comes to crafting the worst record label agreement possible, Let's make sure that you are relying on the record label for 100% of your marketing. So you have a big label now. Maybe, I don't know if it's big. You have some size label now. And that's so cool. And they're promising to help. And they might even hire a social media person to help you with your social media, blah, blah, blah. So at this point, you should definitely stop marketing yourself. Stop making content. Stop posting stories. Stop having a vision for your own brand. Well, on the flip side of that, obviously, you got to keep going. It doesn't matter. If you get a label that signs with you, you have to treat it like a partnership. They're there to enhance what you are doing. Because at some point, the label's not going to be there. Okay? You did, let's say you signed to the worst re record label agreement. You know, at some point, that agreement's going to be over and you're back to square one. So you always want to be in charge of your marketing. Because again, if you are hustling and posting and you have a content schedule and you're not paying attention to stupid vanity metrics of numbers and haters, like none of that matters. What matters is that you are producing content and you're marketing. And then if someone comes in, it's like a great label and they're enhancing what you're doing. Love it. So if you definitely want to have the worst deal, I say you do the opposite. Let's make sure you just stop all marketing efforts and just let the label do it. They'll come up with something, right? Next, number eight, let's make sure also that we give the label first right of refusal when it comes to all aspects of your music career. This is one of my favorites for crafting the crappiest record label agreement possible for you. So what this means is that record label is gonna have the right to keep you to them related to the stuff that they say and let's let's spell it out right so it might be you know once we're done with the contract and the options and all the things when you get a new offer from a label we as a label have the first right to match that offer and we can keep you again as long as we match whatever was offered to you then we can keep you they'll also say in the agreement as it relates to your merchandising rights you know if you want to work with like merchandising guy or if you want to work with a publisher 
So in your contract, if you want to have the crappiest contract possible, you're going to give the label the right to have first right of refusal related to all the things going on with your music career or just some. Number nine in the worst possible record label contract that we could possibly craft for you. We're going to make sure that we also don't have a termination provision because we don't care how you get out of the contract. So in it, it says we're signing. It's going to be great. You're going to produce all these albums. We're going to support you, but we're going to make sure that we don't say in the contract how you get out of it. Because if you say in the contract how you get out of it, then if there's a breach, you come to me. And you say, hello, Miss Entertainment Attorney. How the F do I get out of this contract? They're terrible. They haven't sent me accounting. They haven't done anything. They don't respond to me. Well, I'm going to go through and go, all right, so we're looking for how do we even get out of the contract pursuant to the contract that you signed? So if you want to have a better deal that ensures how you get out of it, then you're going to have a termination provision. And if you want to have the worst deal possible, you're going to make sure there's no termination at all. And then we're gonna get to the very last one. Before we do that, please be sure to hit like and subscribe on YouTube. I appreciate you guys and I just love helping you and helping you stay legally protected. So we're gonna keep releasing videos and helping you every step of the way. Number 10, when it comes to crafting the worst record label agreement humanly possible, we're also gonna make sure that you never get an attorney because you can handle it yourself. You know how to read a contract. You know how to read words, come on. And yes, it's like 40 pages long. And yes, there's a lot of legalese, but like you basically understand it. And better yet, because number one, we weren't even reviewing the contract in the first place. And we just trust what the record label is saying. We don't need an attorney to review it because an attorney's going to get in there. An attorney's going to sniff out all the nonsense. I have reviewed thousands of record label contracts and I've seen them so many times. Nothing can be hidden from me. I understand everything, I fix everything, and there's just no nonsense that gets past me. That's the kind of attorney that you want who can help to keep you legally protected. So if you are trying to have the absolute worst deal humanly possible, you will follow all the steps and all the things that I described in this video. And because you clicked on this video and you're watching it, I hope it means that you have a deal and hopefully you have something going on and you have some negotiation power and you're going to get an attorney and you're going to make sure that you stay legally protected because you're awesome and your career deserves you to continue being awesome and you deserve to have a great deal.